And I unfortunately do not have the script. Kim usually does that to start. There's Tracy. Hi. Okay. Sorry about that. I don't Tracy. know where that link went. Hi, 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 is everyone. So, um, Tracy, you, do you know if Kim's going to be joining us? Kim is not able to attend today. She said she had a conflict. That's right. That's okay. So I can um say the little thing we have to say. Yes, we are <laughs> official. So, unless somebody already said it. Uh, no, none of us no, can find it. All right, here it is. Okay, so it says, um, so hi everyone. So pursuant to chapter 20 of the acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner via Zoom under the webinar ID. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted and public participation uh, will be you know, conducted by remote means only. So, all right. And so the first thing we're supposed to do with this, of course, is to um, at least check in with everybody and make sure that everybody is able to hear. So do we have to, I don't know, some committees do it verbally and they make sure yeah, that I can hear you. Hear. Okay. You. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. Okay. I'm present. Excellent. Present. I can hear. All right, great. Thanks. Thanks everyone. Excellent. Okay, so let's get the show on the road. So um, this is very exciting because for the first time in over two years, we have a full committee. Yay. Uh, and also for the first time in, I don't know, probably about six months, we have a council TSO liaison to the committee, Andy Steinberg. So welcome, Andy, too. Um, do we want to just go around and maybe new members first and um, just like briefly introduce yourselves and then we can introduce ourselves as well. Sure, I can get started. Um, I apologize that you can't see my lovely mug. Um, I'm just having a camera issue on my, um, my computer that I think I have to power down to solve. Uh, my name's Christine Lindstrom. I live on Butterfield Terrace, right? Um, adjacent to the UMass campus and uh, moved here in 2018. Uh, I have one child. She is at Wildwood Elementary. Um, I spent years and years working for um, uh, MassPerg and USPerg, which are both um, uh, public interest organizations. Um, I've spent a lot of time working in particular on um, stopping global warming pollution and um, a variety of policies towards that end. Um, and I'm also a, um, a walker. I really enjoy walking. Um, we moved downtown so that we didn't have to drive as much to get around. And um, I'm committed to ensuring that everybody can walk and roll with as much ease as possible um, so that we can reduce global warming. Right, sorry, I was on mute, but um, thank you and welcome. Welcome to our committee. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, I am, I'm Stefan Shaich. Um, I am, I live on Greenwich Road in South Amherst, so closer to uh, Hampshire College off 116 there. Um, I'm currently a, a master's, a master's um, sorry, master's of public policy student at the School of Public Policy at UMass Amherst. Um, my experience, I've worked for the MBTA in Boston for five years um, on an IT implementation uh, role. Uh, it was really internal facing, so it wasn't anything that the public would see, but it was affecting um, all um, 3,000 or so uh, employees at the MBTA, sub, uh, all of subway and uh, bus operations, um, as well as supervisory um, operations. Um, so I did that for five years. Prior to that, I was also an undergraduate at UMass Amherst. I'm a graduate in 2015 with my degree before I went to Boston for five years. And in while at UMass, actually, I actually also worked for UMass Transit Services for uh, four years uh, in my time as an undergraduate. 
And now as a uh, graduate student at UMass Amherst, um, I am back to working at uh, UMass Trans Services, uh, both in front end as well as some uh, back end operations. Um, so I have a pretty good idea of uh, uh, public transportation, um, especially as it relates to this town. Um, and I also grew up in this town. So I've lived here. I've gone through all the, the entire public schooling system here from when it used to be called Mark Smith Elementary School there at the School of Education, College of Education at UMass, through the middle and high schools. And of course, as already, as already mentioned, uh, UMass for uh, undergraduate and graduate studies. So I'll be graduating this May, just a couple months from now, and I'm looking for jobs in the area. Um, so that is a very high level, I guess, overview of me. So I'm uh, welcome any questions or anything anyone has uh, um, curiosities about. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks for being on our committee. Okay, so do we want to just, um, uh, Andy, do you want to just chime in here since you haven't been, you may have been a TAC liaison in the past, but not since I've been on the committee and not since many of the members have been on the committee. Do you want to give us a quick introduction to yourself too? Yes, I, I can. Uh, I'll be very limited in, um, but I am, not a member of the committee. I am counsel the ASM, and we decided because of the link with TSO that we would try and find the liaison to be somebody who's also on TSO. I had served when I was on the select board, when we had a select board, um, I was liaison to the predecessor uh, bicycle and transportation committee. So I um, did have some um linkage in that way uh, but it was a different committee with a more limited charge than the current committee and uh, i just uh again want to emphasize that the role of um, a council liaison is uh, set forth in the council rules of procedure and it is to facilitate communications between committees that are um, important to the work of the council and um, uh, the council, and uh, but I am not a member of a committee, and um, therefore, um, when you're debating matters, um, I, if I'm in attendance, is to listen, but only to participate if they ask the direct question. So thank you. And thank you, thank and you I think too, right? You can also support. help us get updates from TSO on things that would relate to TAC, right? So that's always a question yes. for me sometimes is, I do try to attend the TSO meetings, but sometimes I'm only there part of the time and sometimes I don't make it, so. But that connection is just really important because I know that TSO spends quite a bit of time thinking about transportation and public ways sometimes, so thank you. Okay, um, I will introduce myself just I did get to meet uh, Christine and Stefan earlier during their interviews, but I'll just give you a quick overview again and then if everybody else in the committee can do the same that'd be great. Um, so my name is Tracy and I've been on the committee since the fall of 2019 um, and we were shut down over COVID for a number of months and um, um i and i'm the chair i became the chair last year and um kim um tremblay who wasn't able to make it tonight she shares some of the chair responsibilities with me including facilitating the meetings because she's a great meeting facilitator um and i do work in transportation professionally for my job um and i have a variety of experiences including working for planning agencies um both on local planning and regional planning and working on traffic safety research and, um, and doing some human factors work at UMass. And now one of my roles is I work a lot with the state DOT. I'm helping with their research program and occasionally doing some research on my own, including for older divers. And um, I have a big interest in pedestrian safety and bicyclists and safety in general and also just accessibility, equity, sustainability, all the bigger picture issues related to transportation and how we can make our systems better. So, thanks. Okay, anyway, else? Could go, I could go next. I, I, I'm Bruce and Christine, I'm a near neighbor of yours. I live at 8 Strong Street. So 
I mentioned you go by my house on the way to the Wildwood School. That's right. Uh, I'm yes. near the top of Wildwood, near the top of Strong Street. And okay. I was on the Amherst Planning Board for eight years, as well as a zoning subcommittee. And I have an interest in particular of uh, biking and pedestrian issues. So I'm an avid walker also. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, well, I'll take a, a turn. I'm, I'm Bernie Kubiak, uh, relatively new to the committee. I've been here a little over a year. Um, I'm also on the, uh, the citizen representative on the finance committee, which Andy chairs. Um, Stefan, I, I'm a graduate of the public policy program at UMass. Don't let that discourage you. Um, <laughs> it's a great program, actually. Um, I have a considerable amount of, of municipal experience in uh, uh, working as a, I've been a selectman and a county commissioner, and I've uh, been the administrator in three towns in Massachusetts, and have an abiding interest in getting people around and making um, making towns accessible and uh, welcoming. Uh, so that's uh, that's why I'm here. I, when I can find my mute button, I'll okay. My name is Marcus Smith. I'm a resident of Amherst for, I think, since 2016 or 15. I can't remember when I moved in. Um, and I've been on TAC, I think, a little bit sooner than Tracy, maybe, let's say, 2019 early ish, somewhere around there. I can't remember. Um, but I work in air traffic control, I work for the, uh, the MITRE Corporation. Um, so not quite moving cars and people around, but uh, it's all good stuff. And I've been a active uh, participant in uh, Transportation Research Board for a good long while. So it's all there. Cool. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right. And um, we also have with us Guilford Morin, who's the head of the DPW, and Christine Bresop, who's the head of the Planning Department. If you, if you want to say a few words, feel free or not. Okay. <laughs> All right. So let's move on with our agenda. So the next item was um, announcements. If anybody had any announcements, I had a few that I was thinking about. Um, does anybody else have any? Yeah, just a quick personal one, Tracy, before you sure. begin. I, I, have okay. a, I have a fairly hard stop at 6.30. Okay. Oh. All right, so let's see. If you leave the committee, Bernie, at 6.30, uh, I think we still have one, two, three, four. We will still have a quorum because now we have more members, which is awesome. So, but thank you for letting us know. Tracy, I just want to bring up really quickly. I didn't get it. I got my pack in the mail today that Christine was referring to at the start of the meeting. I did not have a chance to go get sworn in. So okay. I did speak with the... Uh, oh. I speak with the town hall and they said I can join the meeting. I just can't vote. So I plan on okay. getting tomorrow. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, I think so typically we actually don't take very many votes. We're an advisory committee. So we mainly just discuss things. Occasionally we'll vote on something before we send it forward to the TSO or the council for consideration, but it's good okay. to know. We and, will have to vote on our minutes. That's oh, we will have to vote on our do. minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's or or pretty when we disband. <laughs> So yes, but at the end of the meeting. I think that um, because Stefan and I were not here, we we would not be able to vote on the minutes regardless. Okay. It's retroactive and we- No, absolutely. That makes sense. Thank you, Christine. Um, okay, so just a few announcements that I had um, just from our last meeting. We hadn't met in a few weeks because people had conflicts. Um, so one item I noticed in the town manager's report that and this has come up with the committee before about East Pleasant Street with um, extending the sidewalks there. Um, that the town manager mentioned that the surveying will be starting shortly um, and going up to Pine Street. And um, I think it's supposed to take a few months. Um, Guilford, did you have any other updates on that? No. Okay, <laughs> thanks. And um, let's see, I was in a meeting today um, for my work, I work at UMass, the UMass Transit Cent um, Transportation Center, and we were just talking about with the new transportation bill, like all the money that's out there for grants. Um, I think it's up to nationwide, it's up to like $110 billion for a variety of transportation projects. Um, towns 
will some of that money is coming directly to MassDOT and then um, also towns would be able to apply. Um, so I know for our end, we are looking to get more information out to towns about the resources for that um, and the grant opportunities. Um, and some of that information will be at the UMass Transportation Center MassDOT conference in May. So um, with MassDOT, we host two conferences a year. Um, one is in May and one is in the fall. And, um, and that some of the topics will be covered there related to the funding. And also just on that note too, we did have the fall conference, which was called Moving Together. It focuses a lot on bikes and peds and transit. That conference was completely remote. And so it was really good because we had participants from a number of different states speaking, as well as some international participants doing some really creative thing, things with mobility overseas. And all of the recordings from all those sessions are now available online. Um, so if the community is interested, I can send out like a link to that. There's lots of great content there to look at. Um, and um, that was all. That was all for me. Okay. Thanks. Okay, so we are on to the minutes. Um, do the people who can vote on the minutes feel like they had enough time to look them over? Mm -hmm. All right, so. Okay. Yeah. okay, so I looked them over too. I did have a few. These are the minutes from the um, the March, sorry, the, I guess the February 3rd. February 3rd, yeah, I knew that was, I knew March was wrong. I, d I had already pulled them up and was looking at them. Um, so I didn't, I did notice a few things for Amber to update, including the fact that now our meetings by request with somebody who had a conflict that our meetings are now starting at 5.30 and not five. Mm -hmm. And I think she had kept the template to say that they still start at five. Um, corrections as well, just that the um, under the announcement and comment section. So the DAC meeting that was scheduled for February, it actually wasn't canceled. It's just that my participation was canceled because I had a family conflict. Um, so at that meeting, I understand that somebody from the DPW did attend that DAC meeting and they did review the Kendrick plan, Park plans and they made some updates based on the DAC feedback. Um, and then I just had some edits to just about relating to the parking restrictions. So we talked about that at a few different meetings about following up on the DPW's recommendation to um, prohibit on street parking on arterial roadways, except where it's noted explicitly. Um, so I just changed a little bit of the language there just to say that we were reviewing the DPW document that had recommended you know, restricting the on-street parking and that we also looked at the list of the minor arterials and major arterials and we supported having a restriction on both of those and that that and this was the um the meeting on the third and that i said i would prepare a brief memo with the tax recommendations for the next meeting that we review it which is what we did we did it on the 10th so those are my only like changes so I mean, Amber takes nice, short, quick minutes. So did anybody else have any other changes? No, I move that we uh, accept the minutes with your changes. Okay. Thank you, Marcus. I'll second. I'll second. All, right. all right, thank you, Bruce. All right, all in favor? Okay, anybody not in favor and staying? So you're in favor, right, Bruce? Yes. Yes, so okay. I, I put my hand up. That was, I know that yeah, was. It, 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 it was a bit of delay there, right at the time when you said no. Right, okay, so thank you. So everybody here, so we will note for Amber that the minutes were approved um, four to zero with two abstentions. Um, so uh, just for the people who hadn't been at the meeting. Great. Okay, so moving on. So um, our next item was just to recap, and I'm sorry, I realized I only sent this out to you about like five minutes or less before the meeting, um, but it was just to follow up on the memo that we had written at the last meeting and I, um, I had prepared and then I had gotten some feedback on about just that the TSO had asked for our feedback on the proposed permit, parking permit regulation revisions. Um, and so I did send 
for the people who were on the committee at the time, I did send around a draft memo for your feedback based on our discussion. And then it went to TSO, a final version of it. And so I included it in an email, again, right before the meeting, just so that everybody could see what it said. And um, we really didn't have any substantive, too many, in my opinion, any real substantive changes with the regulations that we were recommending. Um, and in fact, our two suggested revisions were things that weren't even changed in the proposed changes by town staff and the parking group, the, whatever they're called, the parking, um, you know, super group. <laughs> um so you know the one main change was just to make sure that when the um, when the regulations when the new regulations go into place that the changes that were already approved by the council for north pleasant street to not continue to have permit parking on the west side of north pleasant street adjacent to kendrick park that that because the council had already made that change that that's reflected in the parking permit regulations um and then we had also made a, a tiny recommendation related to one of the residential parking permit areas to ask that um, it also include um, that people who live on page also be eligible for those permits. So, so I mean, so one of the questions I had, and I was surprised actually at the TSO meeting where it was discussed, like there was a lot of questions that were raised about the tax recommendations and the feedback at that meeting was that um, the town manager would check and um, and the town finance director would check with um, staff to see if our recommendations made sense. So um, I don't know if, if Guilford or Christine, if you were contacted on that and if you had any feedback. I wasn't contacted, but I probably wouldn't have much feedback. Guilford's the one who would have feedback. Okay. So I, did. I wasn't contacted either. I think you might. I think you might have been away part of that week too, perhaps. I was. Um, so the thing was, so Guilford, it was really just the main recommendation was just to make sure that the parking regs, when they're updated, that they reflect that the council had already approved. Um, not allowing parking on the west side of North Pleasant Street next to the park. And the version that went out for public comment and for in the advertising for the public hearing, which is gonna be held next week, like still had North, North Pleasant Street listed um, with the west side where all the different driveways were and that's what we had been concerned about. I mean, do you see any, not to put you on the spot or anything, but do you see any issues with changing that? I mean, do you think that I don't know how what the time frame is for the changes that are proposed on North Pleasant Street. Well, uh, there's there's no funding right now, so oh okay. So making changes now, we're kind of looking at North Pleasant Street as it's going. It would be built not this season but next season. Ah, uh, okay. It gets through all the process. Okay. So do you not see, so just for uh, Christine and Stefan, um, so one of the things is that in the fall, and then it was approved by the council in December, is that um, for North Pleasant Street, which is next to Kendrick Park downtown, the proposal was to make North Pleasant Street a one-way street and to provide some additional parking on the angle like angled parking on the park side of the park, like for families and so on, and that to eliminate parking on the west side of the street. And then also just to do additional traffic calming to discourage people from like cutting through, like making it a one way street would discourage traffic from UMass cutting through that neighborhood. And there's, there's plans for a raised crosswalk at McClellan. And then some of the design plans also have a additional raised crosswalk north of McClellan. So to just make it a more neighborhood traffic calmed area to reflect the fact that now the park is getting a lot of usage with the playground and things and it shouldn't be a cut through. So, okay. So, that, so that's not um, the road that's going by like the restaurants. That's more the kind of auxiliary road, if you will, that parallels. Right, yeah, it's a little confusing. Okay. So North Pleasant Street is actually the road on the, west side of the park and okay. east pleasant street the one that goes by all the restaurants and then it goes to the 
the roundabout and then up the hill is that's all east pleasant street okay so that would still be two direction and then the little right the north pleasant would be going uh one way into town it would be going one way UMass. out of towards one UMass. way toward umass yeah okay okay oh i see that's this, okay and then you yeah. have parking on one side of the street okay right and the and the one-way traffic would start at mcclellan yeah I know so that. like okay. right at the end of the street it would continue to be two-way got it okay so so i guess so guilford it sounds like if um if that project isn't gonna come online in terms of construction until next construction season like the summer of 2023 then maybe if and if there's no plan to do anything with the parking around Kendrick Park until that whole project is built, then it sounds like maybe there isn't an issue with continuing to have the parking permits allowed on the north on the west side of North Pleasant Street for now and then after like maybe next summer to change it or something. I was just concerned I was I had been under the impression that the project was going to be done this summer, but so. We don't. There's so many projects for this summer. No, I understand. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. And do, so, I mean, we can, we can give that feedback. And then there was like the other small recommendation. I think, I think, I'm sorry, Gilbert, I thought I had emailed it to you too, but there was also a small recommendation that there's a small, and I can pull up, um, a copy of the map, hold on, let me find it. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just gonna share my screen. Okay, so can you just see my acrobat here you guys can't see like all my <laughs> windows but um so one of the things that we had looked at too is so most of downtown with the downtown parking permit program that people mainly have if you have a permit you mainly have one of these yellow permits which allows you to park in any of the yellow areas a lot of the areas that are close to the heart of downtown that aren't in yellow are actually metered parking um so these are designed for people who are parking more on the periphery who then would have permit parking and they would be able, it would be available to residential, um, to people who live there as well as people who work in the downtown area. And then there's also two, these two um, small residential only permit parking areas, which this is not something that the, the town when they were working on the revisions of the parking permit regulations had looked at. Um, but it was mentioned at one of the meetings, oh, you know, somebody could look at them and they, if they wanted. And I, I tried to research it and I went to the sites just to see what they were about too. So one of the things is that, so this area here, this is there's residential only permit parking area one. So this is Nutting and Allen. And there's basically a bunch of fraternities in this area. And these permits are pretty highly used. So the idea here is that the reason that you have this residential only permit parking area one is that you actually need to live um, in one of these houses. So you can't live like way over here and like park there and then like be right on campus, like use it as your parking place for campus when um, so that's why those are implemented. And then these ones here, again, there were some concerns, I think residential concerns about people, again, who maybe live other parts of downtown, like using, trying to park here and not allowing residential parking. Um, and so this, what this does is this allows you to have this residential only permit parking area two, which is on the south side of McClellan Street, like up to Beston. And then it also, what's interesting is in the language of the regulations, it also allows people who live on Cosby um, to also park in this area. So currently on Cosby, um, parking is restricted on the south side of the street all the time, it's not allowed. And then on the north side of the street, it's only allowed after 3 p.m. But this would allow Cosby residents, if they needed to, to park over here as well, which is already in the current regulations. Um, but one thing that's interesting is that 
somebody from Page had mentioned. So most of the properties along McClellan all have their own driveways. And most of the properties along Page have their own driveways and Cosby, they all have their own driveways. But some of the driveways are pretty small. So if you have visitors, you need to find some place for your visitors to park. So one issue that had come up with a resident on Page who contacted the TAC, they said their driveway is quite small and that if they have any visitors, because they're not actually in the residential only permit parking area and they're not on the section of McClellan or on Cosby that their visitors have to park all the way over Kendrick Park. So they were just looking to see if their visitors could be accommodated in this area. So that was our other recommended change. And this is way in the nitty gritty details, which is probably more than most people. Unless you've actually looked at the map, you wouldn't um, know any of that. And I don't, I'm not sure exactly of the history. Like it's sort of interesting to me that McClellan is part of this area two area and that Cosby people can park in area two, but Page people can't. So it sort of just seemed like some correct and edit to me. Um, so I don't know, but that was another one where um, that we were told that, you know, the, the town manager or the finance director would reach out to get input from staff. And we're, we're not proposing, I mean, so on page, there's no parking on street and on Beston, there's no parking on street. I don't know, but Guilford, if you thinking about that now, of course, just on the spot, if you have an opinion, do, do you see any issues with that? No. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so, and again, I really don't think that, I mean, my perception is that because everybody on page has their own driveways and everybody on Beston has their own driveways and people on Cosby and McClellan have driveways, like it's really not gonna be an issue for residents. It's only gonna be an issue if residents have guests and they're just looking for some place where their guests can park without getting towed. So, okay, thank you. So I'll stop sharing my screen now. Okay, all right. So, um, I mean, we already gave our opinion, you know, for the, there is a public hearing next week for TSO to get public input. Um, it's gonna be on Zoom, the public hearings at 7 p.m., I don't know. Now, Andy, um, is there going to be a regular TSO meeting then too, or is the whole meeting going to be devoted to the public hearing? Do you know? Not sure. I think that it's posted so that it can be a meeting, but I haven't seen an agenda. So I don't know what uh, the chair plans. Okay. Okay, thanks. And then do you know, does, is the... TSO then, do you know the time frame on this? The TSO then planning to then discuss the input it gets, you know, either at the meeting on the 10th or I guess the next meeting, which I guess is the 24th, right? And then you would be sending something forward to the council soon after. Do you know the time frame on that? I don't think that it's anticipated to do it on the 10th. I think that we okay. wanted a little bit more time, but um, again, it's, uh, from the TSO side, that's up to them. The other committee that's looking at it that Bernie and I sit on is the finance committee. Uh -huh. And we did have a discussion about it from the finance side of it because um, the uh, parking permits and um, there's also the piece for the uh, parking in the lower level of the garage that's rented out uh, are revenue sources for the enterprise fund the transportation enterprise fund and so the finance committee interest was um, trying to make sure that we're also thinking about that side of it sure. and we uh, did do um, preliminary but we're at, we're looking for feedback from the uh, from the forum and see if there's a public reaction to the proposal and then we've reserved the possibility of revisiting it as a finance committee afterwards. Okay. Okay, thanks. Yeah, so at our um, at the last TAC meeting, you know, we the TAC didn't really feel like it was within you know within our range of something that we need to be talking about to like think about the finance of it. We're just thinking more about you know, the accessibility part and things. 
aside from the money because we knew because Bernie is on our committee and he had mentioned that finance committee was also reviewing it so we didn't look at those elements of it so but but thank you I mean one thing I had heard on the finance side is that at one of the meetings it talked about I mean the how the transportation fund is an enterprise fund but that currently the parking permits only pay for about like five percent of the parking you know the parking related expenses for the town so it's really not doing its job very well as an enterprise fund <laughs> it's supposed to be self-sustaining so okay thanks okay um so going on to continuing business so um i i did send again right before the meeting i did send a copy of this draft memo that had been on my plate for a while which is item a and i do want to sort of reserve the most amount of time to talk about that um so i'll just i just want to go on to b and c and then we can come back to a so for item b it was about north pleasant street is lane to pine street um, this was a carryover item from the last council and the last TSO um, because the TSO as well as the TAC, we got busy on other things, including the North Pleasant section near Kendrick Park. Um, Tracy, just quickly, could you share? Yeah. Could you share what you're talking about just for people? Oh, you sure, know, of the, course. Other, okay. You know, um, for the recording. Oh, good. Thank you, Marcus. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know, maybe Guilford has like a good map of it. Guilford, do you have a good map of it, of the North Pleasant Street from Eastman Lane to Pine Street? Do you have anything you can pull up? Uh, yeah, but it's, it's not, yeah, hold on. Okay, thanks. I mean, I have your memo, but I feel like it's more informative for people to look at the map. Well, it's, it's very big, so we don't and have- It's very big, that's true. I can just bring up the Thanks for the reminder, Marcus. So. Uh, I lost my share button. Well, you're the host. Oh, I got it. I found okay, it. Good. Okay. You use, can you see this? Yes. Yeah. Thank right. you. So this is North Pleasant Street here. This is Eastman. Um, this is probably the best way to do it. So right. Sorry. So this this project is going. It's starting at Eastman, which is the roundabout, and it's going north up to the center of North Amherst Pine Street. And um, I apologize, um, Stefan and Christine, for not sending it to you, but I'll send you a copy of the memo that the DPW had prepared about this project in general um, and the improvements that they're looking at, which include some pedestrian improvements along the corridor, as well as you know widening the street in some places, widening the sidewalk, um, and doing some additional crosswalks and possibly a roundabout. Guilford, do you want to talk about some of the details on that? So I'll start here at Pine Street and work my way south. So in the area of North Pleasant and Pine Street, um, we're going to update, upgrade the bus pull-offs in here. There's one on this side, one on this side. Um, we're actually going to get rid of this small little road here and make driveways come out to the road. Um, in this section, the wide sidewalk, we'll have, try to have an eight-foot sidewalk on the east, on the west, west side of Pine of North Pleasant Street and have a five foot sidewalk, a new five foot sidewalk on the east side here. Um, we come down, this is the Huffton's first entrance and there'll be a new crosswalk I think here is what the plan showed. There's a new crosswalk at the second one as well. Um, there's an updated, up, Dated bus pull-offs in this area and new crosswalks. And this was the this is the area. This is North Village and Crestview Apartments. This is the area we looked at possibly doing a roundabout. 
Um, we're not quite sure if that'll happen or not. Yes, please. Um, and this is also the area where the, the multi-use path will shift to the east side of the road and the five foot sidewalk will shift to the west side of the road. And then we'll have a sidewalk, we'll have the, those two sidewalks coming down. And I don't think we had any other crosswalks until you get back to this area. And we start up, we start up grading these crosswalks. And that's pretty much the, that's pretty much it. But the goal is, is to, there's two sidewalks there now. They're about three feet wide. Um, one side will be five feet, one side will be eight feet. That's the goal. And the eight foot um, width is a multi-use? Yes. Cool. Are the, do, do you know if there are going to be any updates in regards to street lighting, specifically around the North Village Crest 2 area? Because I know heading northbound there, it's 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 sometimes quite difficult to see um, around that crosswalk there across North Village, right where it, right where that right turn is, where uh, with a sweeping bend to the right is around the bus stop. Yeah, right around there. Um, there'll be light and there'll be lighting improvements at the crosswalks. Okay. Well, and we had talked to so Stefan. So in the fall, um, the TAC had done two walking tours of this section of North Pleasant Street. Like we did half one day and the another half the other day. Mm -hmm. And one thing we had noticed is that there is a lot of overgrown vegetation on the east side of the street. Yep including one like at the at the sidewalk level it's like encringing on the sidewalk first of all mm -hmm. you know where there's been runoff and you know and so on where the sidewalk is shrinking that way but then even with trees above it as well mm -hmm. that it's like they really are blocking off some of the light i mean so the light is really strong on the umass section mm -hmm. and then you know there's a section where it's really dark so we yeah. did agree with that yeah and um, what else I just want to ask is towards North Amherst near the intersection of Meadow Street, are there any plans to make the right turn off of Meadow Street onto North Pleasant uh, any wider? Yeah, so right where the Black Walnut Inn is right here, that right hand turn. Is there any plans to make that wider? And then that's one question. The second question related to that is the bus stop there in the southbound direction. I know Guilford mentioned there's going to be a plan for a pull-off. Is that for both sides of the pull-off? So I guess those are my two questions. Yes. I, um, actually, hold on a second. Because I know when driving the bus, the, that right turn is impossible to make. Actually, there's a bus right there. Uh, if there's a car like that black car in the image, if it's stopped right there, it's impossible to make without running over the curb or swinging the, into the other lane, which is actually not recommended. So... No, <laughs> there's, there's no plan to put a, a, a right turn lane in here or even a left turn lane. There's just not enough layout width in here. Um, okay. we, we, need to, we need to take this house to do that. And I don't think we're gonna take this house that's right here. No. Um, so there's not gonna be any additional turn room. right or left turn lane. Okay, but we're gonna um, put a roundabout right there. The goal eventually is to put a roundabout around in the whole intersection. Yes. Okay. Um, well, and the other thing, Guilford, you had talked about and that we saw, um, you know, on the ground there is that currently if you're on the, um, if you're at the, um, at the house of teriyaki property, right, and you want to cross over to say the apartments on Meadow Street, you're technically, the, there's currently no crosswalk. It sort of looks like there's a crosswalk here. On the no, area, there's a crosswalk. There's actually not. Oh, but there's mm -hmm. no, because we had talked about how, like in terms of pedestrian crossings, it sort of is encouraging you to do like the three sides and not cross right there. Like, I don't think there is a traffic. Is there a signal right there to cross on the south side of the intersection? Yeah, there was, some weird, there was something weird about it. Yeah, it, it, yeah. we just sort of bolted across. <laughs> Yeah, well, we and, did. and yeah. actually, and I had been there, I was in that intersection recently and I saw UMass people who were, you know, running like jogging up to the intersection and they just sort of dashed across. But I remember when we were there on the ground that we had talked about how, 
the, all the pedestrian signals are set up for you to go like on the three sides and not just dash across. So, um, but that seems that seems like that would be a good improvement. Yeah. Too. I finally found the one person that uses Bing. <laughs> <laughs> Bing Maps. I didn't even know oh, they had hey, Maps. This is crazy. This is well, so wow, crazy. look at that. Oh. Actually, the, the funny thing is, is that Bing Maps and Amherst actually has some of the most updated photo photography. Oh, really? So that's yeah. why we use it. Although wow. this one, this one's only 2015. So. so I didn't know Bing had Maps. Oh, wow. I learned something. So do you see here yeah. so how there is no pedestrian... I there's guess no there ramps. Is, yeah, but there's also no like pedestrian signal, like light or anything, and the pedestrian light is on the other corners. Well, there, there's not one here because it kept getting knocked off. Okay. Mm. Mm. I see. From all these um, bus drivers taking it out. Probably. <laughs> but there is well, there one, is one on this side. See all it? All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this, this one, one has two. With, oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I mean that's just. That's just probably that um, might have been why, because we were crossing from the um, house teriyaki side trying to figure out how to get across. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. So we wouldn't have seen the other way. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. But in the redesigned intersection, it would have like pedestrian crossings on all the legs. Well, it'll be a yes. roundabout. That'd be it, awesome. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> that's long. <laughs> that's in the distance. And it won't and it won't get hit. It, like if there's a new one on this corner on the left, it won't be getting hit, so it will. Well, yeah, I mean, the one issue here is this pole here, this utility pole. So it goes, it goes both all, both directions and we gotta figure out how to move this pole and then keep the wires out of the intersection. Because I mean, the pole is right on the curb. That's mm -hmm. why you don't have more room for buses. Right. right. And that's assuming the um, Watroba market would stay there. Old Watroba market. The old Watrobas, yes. Yeah. Oh, the but that's, da that's down a ways, though, right? I mean, no, no, no this that's is the that old building Wotrobas. right there. Oh, right. Oh. Yeah, that's a rental house now. Oh, this yeah. used to have gas pumps out front, and oh, grocery store. I think someone lived upstairs, and yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So after we had done the two site visits, you know, we had we had uh, the majority of us had walked it twice, um, and so we had some notes to write up. So it did go. It was a carryover item to um, TSO and the council. And at one of the first TSO meetings, they said, well, you know, we need to make sure that there's like all the stakeholders are involved and in sort of almost restarting the whole process. Um, but I would still like to, even though it got sidelined, you know, by some of the other TAC and TSO priorities, I would still like us to at least write up our observations and our recommendations, like based on our site visits um, and, and send that forward. And then if the TSO, the new TSO decides to, have you know more public input and so on that they can do that but at least they have that information and we've indicated you know our feedback so does that still make sense to people to do that I mean, yes. it got lost i mean originally the tso chair at the time had said okay we need your feedback by like early september or something it just uh, the time frame was way too tight and then the tso got busy with many other things um andy do you have some comments yeah, actually a question for Guilford because it did come up during TSO discussions and it, um, we're unclear as to what the um, priorities are for sidewalk funding for the next year and whether there's actually even funding available for the project. And so how quickly to move it depends upon whether it's going to go anywhere. Um. So now we get into the question I always have, which is the chicken and the egg. Um, yes, we need funding, but on the North Pleasant Street project, we're also going to need to take property. So if the council doesn't agree to the concept plan, I cannot go talk to property owners about getting property and start the process of getting property. So even though we don't have funding, um, so if we don't get 
So if no one takes it up and approves the plan, I can't start moving the project to a point where we can start actually say, okay, yes, we need this much funding is the problem. So are the land takings, are they required for the roundabout piece of it at Crestview or are they also more along like the, um, the corridor as well? It was the footpath. It was a, um, yeah. Chris, Chris has a question and I'll, I'll bring it back up sure. to you too. So I was just noticing that um, we're getting close to 6.30 and there's a participant here who oh, has okay. her hand up oh. there on the phone and I thought you might want to hear from them. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> All right. Okay. Um, we can sure. So, uh, so we can ask them to unmute. So I think you hit star nine, right, to unmute. If there's any feedback, Guilford um, should be able to unmute them too. I I yeah. Uh, I said I would unmute. So I've asked her to unmute, or him to unmute, sorry. Or them to unmute. Oh, uh, so it's actually, I think from that phone number, it's Rob Kustner calling in. So Rob, you should be able to unmute and join us. All right, maybe he's on hold or something, so. Mm -hmm. No, maybe he got tired of waiting for us. <laughs> sorry, thank you, Chris, for telling us. I'm sorry I didn't notice him right away. I know he had questions about the North Pleasant Street near Kendrick Park. I don't, I don't know what his other questions were. Um, so the, the right-of-way issues on North Pleasant Street, uh, as you notice, in this yellow line here, these yellow lines are property lines. So you can see the sidewalk already is out of the public way. So this is an area we, we would need to ask, this is the boulders um, for, for right away to put the sidewalk in. Uh, and this would be the multi-use path side. So we would need a lot, we need more space. Um, so that's one place. Um, this area here, we're up against the property line. Um, so you have little places like this all the way down the project where this one parcel will be in the, in the one parcel will need to take land from, another parcel we won't. It's just kind of how it's, the road's not centered exactly in the layout. Um, this is a big one. This is a big one here. The whole sidewalk is in the private property of this house. Um, Didn't you have an issue with the state as well? Like no, there's no state issue. Uh, well, um, if you call, yeah, if you call UMass the state. Um, yeah, sorry. Yes, now, we do. Now, this uh, part of the road, I mean, north of Eastman Lane, it's um, it's not UMass. Is that right? Well, this this is the uh, North Village Apartments. Oh, okay, right. So through here, we have an issue where we need to need more property. If we do the roundabout, we need to talk to these this property owner, which is UMass. This is um, Grandonico, and this is Jones Properties. So we need to talk to those three property owners. Um, and then we can get I back to this. down towards the barn, the old barn, right? I think was the other issue. Yes, I mean, here we switch over. So the larger sidewalk is on the, the right side of the drawing and we have pretty much enough right away until we get to this area in here, which this is UMass. Um, so, yeah, so maybe- this is, this is where the barn is. Mm -hmm. So Gilford, I think, I mean, it sounds like we would like to progress with like sending our feedback forward and then TSO can do with it, you know, what TSO chooses in the council that you would need some additional. But before Bernie leaves, because I know we had a hard stop in like a minute or something, I just wanted to check in about, we had the item about the next meetings in March. So we typically meet on the first and the third um, Thursdays and the third Thursday is UMass spring break. and I'm actually not available then. Um, so if we move the meeting to the 
following week, the 24th, is that going to be a conflict for people? Or you guys uh, could have the meeting without me there. That, that's a TSO meeting, just so you know. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's going to be, I think we're going to have some issues because now the TSO is keeping their meetings on Thursdays. And, um, but now, Andy, do the TSO meetings start at 6.30 or at 7.00? I think we decided on 6.30. I just want to point out that um, the way that uh, it's set up for in the rules of procedure for council liaisons, it's not anticipated that uh, liaisons will come or be able to come to all meetings. Okay. And, uh, we request, therefore, just materials, um, the packet materials uh, be sent to the liaison because uh, that. Um, enables us to stay informed. Okay. All right. All right. So, well, and um, Kim isn't here. I know Kim is available on either date. On either date, but well, the twenty fourth um, is good. Okay. Get more people. That's and fine. The, I mean, for me, it, anyway, it's fine. The twenty, the twenty fourth looks okay right now. I mean, there's okay. nothing, there's nothing in my calendar. So, all right. Okay, thanks. So I'll just, before we yeah. book it um, for sure, I'll send around an email just to make sure that everybody agrees and has had a chance to look at the calendar. But um, I prefer to be at the meeting if I can. And mm -hmm. I know I can't make it on the 17th. So thanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I know Bernie's about to leave. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye, Bernie. Okay. Thanks. All right. And then, um, so, and you just, um, before I get back to this memo and you know, that the TAC had been working on, um, uh, do you, are there any other proposals or referrals that would be coming from TSO coming up to, that you see? Let's take a look at one thing. Uh, if we're... I don't know if uh, it depends upon uh, what we're hearing in recommendations from Guilford is, and uh, from Paul Bachelman about what to move forward with. Um, for example, the uh, North Amherst traffic changes, but I think that that's really been put off significantly. Uh, one other issue that may be a crossover that we'll want to talk about is that there's a uh, interest at some time during the next year of reviewing speed limit policy, uh, which is going to start with uh, just a, a presentation for uh, because there's so many people who have not previously been involved in that discussion about what the law allows us to do. Okay, thank you. Now, my understanding, I wasn't on the TAC then, but I understood that there was a presentation made by staff <laughs> earlier about there is something in the state statutes that allow towns to adopt something, you know, to set the speed limit lower like throughout town. And some towns have done that. And I think, Guilford, am I right that somebody from DPW presented on that? Did they present to the council? And how long ago was that? Do you remember at all? Or I don't, we haven't really totally presented it to the council. Okay, all right. It was just, to, it was presented to the, um, at that point, to the um, CRC, the, um, which uh, was then the, the committee that was responsible before we uh, created TSO is a separate committee. And I was on CRC at that time. And uh, I think that the, uh, engineer was skilling and uh, uh, Captain Ting from the police department, who was captain at that time, were the ones who uh, presented uh, what the possibilities were. And uh, But there's really been a turnover on the council since then. So, sure. and, uh, so I think the next step would be a presentation again from Jason and uh, Gabe to the okay. uh, Yes, uh, and you might want to um, have you be aware of the presentation so that 
your committee can attend too, if you wish, because it's really a presentation rather than a discussion. Yeah, no, or if the meeting is recorded, then we could always see it that way. Um, okay, but thank you. Um, so it looks like Rob has unmuted himself. So um, Rob, if you're still there, you're, please give your comments. Rob? He's, oh. It says he's but, not. Well, is it Rob or whomever is calling in? Please. I, leave I comment. think it is Rob Costner because the phone number matches Rob Costner's phone number. Oh, okay. But um, okay, sorry. I mean, his it showed. If you look under attendees, it showed that he wasn't muted, and now he's. Yeah. Muted. No. No. Yeah, yeah. I don't oh, know. Now okay. Now he is muted again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Um. <laughs> Thanks. And then, so just with item eight, it looks like we are going to go with the meeting on the 24th, but I will just send around an email just to double check that that's going to work for everybody. And um, Stefan and Christine, does that seem okay to you if we do it on the 24th? Yes. yes okay. Thank you. All right. Great. Um, and I may look at trying to do um, again with April as well. Maybe if we want to move our April meeting to like, so that it doesn't conflict with school vacation week for people with kids, because um, that can be a little complicated because the third week of the month, we would have a conflict again. Oh yeah, right. I'm actually gonna be in the UK in April. Oh, there you go. Um, oh, sorry, okay. I'm trying to figure out when. Yeah, and, like, uh, like Easter week, yeah. Oh, okay, got it. Um, and then I guess in April, the council hasn't decided yet whether to extend remote meetings or not, have they? So, no. So, I mean, my understanding is that it, it was currently, and maybe I'm wrong, um, Andy, please correct me if I am, that it was it was extending remote meetings until April. Does it beginning of April or end of April or? Uh, Chris has got her hand up. I think I heard from the town manager the other day that after April 1st, if everything is the same as it is now. Um, people, meetings can be um, either remote or um, in person. They can't be hybrid except for town council until the um, governor's um, allowance for remote meetings expires, which is July 15th. So the governor uh. just extended the ability to have remote meetings, but um, the town is not able to support hybrid meetings for other groups besides town council. So individual groups like TAC or the planning board or whatever will be able to decide whether they want to have in-person meetings or um, remote meetings after April 1st. Okay. All right. Thank you. I mean, I don't, I mean, I do like seeing everybody in person, but it's so convenient to not <laughs> have to travel. Yeah, I mean, so long as you're not <laughs> stuck in a tiny room. Yeah. And we didn't, we weren't even able to book the bank. I mean, right, the bank center. We weren't. Mm -hmm. We were kicked out of town hall pretty much every meeting. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, thanks, thanks, Chris, for that update. Um, all right. So, the last item. I didn't realize you know we want to wrap up by seven o'clock. Um, the last item I wanted to just mention briefly is this TAC, this draft TAC memo that we had talked about sending um, to TSO and the council, just as a refresher for. Um, well, mainly an introduction for new council members and a refresher for um, existing council members, continuing council members, just about what the TAC is and what we do and so on. I know sometimes questions have come up and I've heard one thing is that like TAC only looks at bikes or whatever. So it's always helpful, I think, just to give a refresher. And then also we had talked in some of the previous meetings about, you know, just talking to, just sharing with the council about things that we have been involved with before that have been helpful to the town. So um, I did go ahead and draft it. I can pull it up on my screen. I realize I only sent it to people right before the meeting. Um, so that, you know, it's a little long to review just during the meeting right now. I guess one question for the group will be, do we feel like how pressing do we think this is to send forward to TSO um, and the council? I guess there may even be questions about can we send stuff forward to TSO and the council directly if we haven't been asked to do it by the town manager? I'm not sure. Um, though maybe Andy could always include it in one of his like 
TAC, you know, his update as the liaison to TAC. Um, so, yeah, just pull that up. Okay, so. Um, okay, so let's share. I mean, so this was just, you know, we had written up, we had talked about it at different times. Um, I'm sorry, it took me a while to pull this together. My kids were sick and they made me sick and then I had family things um, and I was out of town for a while. But the, um, so basically we just, I wanted to just do an introduction on like what TAC is and you know, how, you know, related to our charge and the documents that help guide us and how we think about projects from a comprehensive point of view not just project by project, but also thinking about some of the overarching goals for transportation in Amherst as expressed by the documents and in terms of like the vision statement. So in January, we did um, re-endorse our vision statement. So I threw that in there. Um, and, you know, I just talked about, and people had provided feedback on this earlier about the, um, you know, projects and feedback that the TAC has provided that's been helpful um, so I talked about the North Pleasant Street project um, and the redesign of the Pomeroy Lane, West Pomeroy Lane and West Street intersection, the Pomeroy Village. Um, Chris had mentioned, you know, that we'd been involved with, I know this project has taken a long time, the improvements along Route 9 from University Drive to South Pleasant Street. It's great to see the project actually underway now, because I think it's been at least a decade in the making. Um, how the TSO, how we were involved with some of the parking, residential parking permit requests and in helping form those guidelines and criteria. The crosswalk design guidelines that we just recently revisited, um, the work that we've done with complete streets. And we had also done the walking audits, including of the South Common area, you know, just these detailed reports. Um, and the work that we've done too with the bicycle and walking network priorities, you know, in terms of updating the maps out of the plan so that once those are, once those GIS layers are updated, they can be used to help inform um, future priorities as well, because they'll be accurately reflected on the map based on the latest TAC feedback. So, and then I just, you know, say that we hope that you continue to work with the town and provide feedback as requested. So, um, do people feel like this is, I mean, I know we had talked about it, I think, you know, even before the new council came on, um, do people think that this is helpful to still share this? Because I know that, for example, like our TAC website hasn't been updated in a while. I've been meaning to ask Amber about that. Um, but just to share, you know, share some of these examples about how we've provided useful feedback and that we're advising. I think it's helpful. Okay. Definitely. Oh. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank I, you, guys. I agree. Okay. Thank so, you, Tracy. That's a lot of work there. Thank you. Yeah, and I thank you very much. All right. Yeah, I think it would be very helpful. Thank you. So, Andy, is this a kind of document that then, once the TAC is finalized, maybe it could be included at a council meeting, you know, as like a liaison report and that we've shared it? Would that be appropriate? for that to be sent that way or? Uh, ultimately, that's up to the council president, but I would okay. think it's likely to be a yes. Okay. And Guilford, does that sound okay to you too? Okay, great. So, I mean, I can change it. I can reframe it to just say that we're writing the council, you know, that we're not, we're not even really sending it to TSO. We're just sending it to the council and that that could be a way for it like to go into the public record. Um, I mean, I, uh, hi, Chris, what's your feedback? So oh, we, have, have we have another attendee now. So okay. I'm happy to promote, um, council member and as to be a panelist too. You don't have to promote me. Hi, everybody. Hi. Here to watch. Hello. Andy is a fabulous liaison, I'm sure. So just wanted to come to a, a TAC meeting. Okay. Thank you. Do you have any comments for us at this time? Or? Uh, I caught about 20 seconds of what you said, so not yet. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you for being here. I'm sure you have many meetings. Okay. Um, yes, Chris. 
So I just wanted to share with you what we've been told as far as getting things to town council. Um, and I'm speaking as staff. We've been told to send everything to the town manager and ask him to figure out how to get it on a town council um, agenda. So I don't know if you're aiming at the town council or if you're just aiming at TSO and I imagine that TSO has another avenue, but <clears throat> my experience is that if you wanted to get to town council, you should send it to the town manager. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so we did that recently with, um, at the, I think was it, I, I don't know, I'm getting our meetings mixed up, but when, for example, we had updated the crosswalk guidelines, right? So that hadn't been something that we had asked to do recently from TSO, like it had been a request that was a few years old and we revisited the guidelines and we brought them back. Um, and that with that, once we finished the guidelines, they went to, um, I think Guilford put them forward to the town manager, right? For consideration. And then I, we did the same with um, our suggestion about restricting the parking on arterial roadways because there wasn't really a clear path to send it forward to the council. Um, but with the, in this case, this is just like an, this isn't any recommendations or anything. This is just like an informational document about who is TAC. Um, but I can check with the town manager on it. So. And it just seemed like I'm always, whenever I'm listening to the council meetings, there's always that part way at the end of the evening, right? When they say liaison reports or like any updates for any of the committees. And so it seemed like that might just be a good opportunity just as an informational document, just to say, oh, hi, like TAC put this together about what tax done and things. I mean, we're not asking for any actions or anything. It's just more info, so, okay. Um, so how do people feel with this document? Do we want to wait? I mean, when people have had a chance to look at it more, do we want to wait and discuss it at the next meeting or do we just, just want, with. just go with it? Yeah. I'm happy with that. That sounds mm -hmm. good to me. Um, why don't I, as I had, um, offered at this front of the meeting, and I think also probably in my email, you know, if people have any feedback, they can just send it to me directly. We can't really have a discussion about it right. on email because that'd be a violation. And then, and I know Kim had a lot of thoughts on this too, and unfortunately she couldn't be here tonight. So we can compile that feedback and then um, send it forward. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. And so, all right, that sounds good. And then, so I guess with that in mind, then I mean, we really don't, in terms of future meetings, um, I don't see a lot of items, except for going back to the North Pleasant Street um, from Eastman Lane to Pine Street and having that written up and discussing that a little bit and then moving that forward, you know, to the TSO is a continuing item that we had meant to, we didn't get to last session. Um, I don't really see too many items on our plate right now of things we need to be doing. Do, do people have, I mean, staff like Chris and Guilford, are there things that you think TAC needs to be doing right now. It's just, I just, I mean, I think TSO is still getting up to speed with what their priorities are. And so. I think there's going to be a lot of comments or a lot of things going to TSO. And then TSO has to decide what they want you guys to be more involved in. I think if they decide to use you more, there might be more things coming. There's some sure. crosswalks new crosswalks that we're going to propose and going to end up getting sent to TSO, I guess. Okay. Um, so there's stuff out there. It's just what the, how the TSO wants to use you, I think. Okay. Um, Guilford, when are we going to get to see uh, an improved design on the Pomeroy stuff? Um, soon. So soon, soon as in like a month or two or soon as in a couple of years? <laughs> no, I have to spend the money pretty soon. Uh, okay. I imagine it might end up at your your March, one of your your next March meeting. It might end, you can still see it probably. Oh, okay. Awesome. okay. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah, that way we'd love to see that. Mm -hmm. so. And can we also as can we also see them the updated design at Kendrick Park? No. <laughs> okay. Yes, you can see that one too. So could we plan that, Guilford, then for if we're going to meet on the 24th, could, I mean, either you or somebody on your team, like, just show us those updated plans and 
So the TSO is going to see that on the 24th too. Oh, okay. So, All right. Um, I assuming the TSO is going to ask for input from TAC and all okay. the other people they asked for at that meeting. So we can, you can see it on the 24th or you can wait, wait, or however you want to do it. It doesn't really, it, it's all. I mean, um, we, it, we already weighed in on the project, so I don't really feel like there's going to be too much for us to. Yeah, I think so it's I mean, more of interest. Uh, than oh yeah. For interest. Yeah. And also, I guess my understanding from, um, from the DAC chair is that, that committee had given some impact to the preliminary design and so that some of it was changed and so it would be nice to see what that looks like in the updated also version. be nice for new members to see what's going on absolutely too. absolutely yeah guilford if it's not too much of a trouble i understand right if we're meeting at 5 30 and then tso is meeting at 6 30 you know we could just put it at the front of the agenda and just get like a quick overview and then you could do the same thing for <laughs> you do the same thing for TSO. <laughs> That'd be great. Oh, thank you. Chris, thoughts? So when you're talking about East Pleasant Street, I think that's what you were just talking about. Um, there were you talking about the crosswalk that's proposed between Kendrick Park and Garcia's? Um, that's going to go before the council sometime soon. Um, and Paul Bockelman asked to get feedback from DAAC on that. And I was wondering if um, the TAC wanted to weigh in on that too. Um, yeah, I think we would. I mean, I'm supposed to be meeting with the DAC next week. Um, and I mean, I do remember way back in the day. So Andy, I had been on the public transportation and bike committee like back uh, even before Guilford came to town, I don't know, about 20 years ago. And um, and at that time, we did really have connections with some of these other committees. Like we had people from Five College Inc. attending the meetings and UMass Transit attending the meetings and somebody from the Senior Center attending the meetings. And so it seems that there are like some shared interests there. And so Chris, I would be interested in us seeing, if that's what Guilford was talking about with the crosswalks, I'd be interested in seeing them. Because, I mean, it seems like that's all part of the same plan, right? So there's the funding to improve along Play, Prey oh. Street and then the crosswalks with East Pleasant Street and then oh. the, the intersection with Prey Street and Triangle. Like, I don't know, are those all, I don't know what, um, what the status on those is. Like, are those still under design or are they? So um, if you look at the, Council's guidance on public ways. Um, the town manager has authority for signage. Okay. So our our RFP installation at an existing crosswalk is false to the town council. I mean town manager. Um, if you want to put a new crosswalk in, you have to go to the town council. Um, so my understanding is from the town manager is that they'll go to the town council and then the town council will either decide to act on it then or refer it to the TSO. And if it's referred to the TSO, the TSO has the option of acting on it then or acting or asking for input from other committees. So. So it's the crosswalk at Garcia's then, is it not, was it not part of those plans that <laughs> Ben Breger already presented, you know, in terms of having additional crosswalks on East Pleasant Street and on triangle and connecting with prey. I mean, I thought that the council had already approved those, but maybe I misunderstood. Okay. There were changes um, uh, that DPW suggested some changes and we agreed with the changes. So we're working on how we can spend that mass DOT money. And one of the ways is to put in this new crosswalk and we know it has to go to T town council. Paul Bachman did ask it to go to DAAC before it went to town council. So, oh, okay. Um, you know, I guess we'll have to talk to Paul about what he wants to do. We have, how many how many stops does he want us to make before we bring it to town council? I guess that's oh, the question. We understand, right. yeah. And yeah. I mean, a lot of times too, things are referred to TAC like after TSO, right? It's like goes to council, it's to TSO to TAC. So, thanks. Uh, Marcus, you have your hand up? I do. I was using the proper buttons. Um, this is a 
question for Guildford, really. So given the unfortunate events of this week with a student from UMass, I know we spoke last, last time or two times ago about the new building that's going in at Amherst College and our oh. concerns about students crossing from one side of South Pleasant to the other. Do we think that the unfortunate events might be a good nudge in the right direction for them to put in a bridge, as you were recommending? Can we kind of bring that up to them again for that? We can talk to them about it, but they're going to go to the council and ask for a new crosswalk um, upstream or actually not upstream, closer to the center of town from the existing crosswalk mm -hmm. that's already there. Sort of a sort of a mid block close to the top of the hill crosswalk. So I don't I don't know. I think the longer this project for Amherst College takes, I think it'll be better for us to ask for these things because um, certain people are retiring and it may open up the window for a little more discussion. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I just think, you know, the, uh, the unfortunate events kind of bring to the fact that at grade crossings are not exactly the safest. So taking students out of the mix is always a good thing by putting them up in the air. So. Well, I mean, I still have questions about um, what actually, I mean, they, we haven't seen an official accident report yet on what happened on no, no, February no, no, 22nd. No. I mean, there's been speculation about whether the pedestrian was at, was actually in the crosswalk or whether they were along walking along the yeah, yeah, I'm not concerned yeah. necessarily about no. exact the details. It's just something happened and we have an opportunity here to potentially get people, you know, tens of feet away from the issue. So put them up in the air and get them out of the way. I think that's a good idea. I think there's one thing you have to consider is also larger vehicles like semi trucks that are 13 feet tall. <laughs> so that oh, might... right. I mean, you would have to build it that high. Yeah. Right, because yeah. actually I've been to some of my coworkers too, and they were like, well, what about the very big vehicles? I'm like, oh, that's a good point, because <laughs> you can't, you don't want to limit them to going all the way around town. Well, but... it's a, I guess it's a state highway too, so there must be some sort of limits on right. your lowest level, but yeah. just completely, it, to me, in the UK, there's a greater, greater acceptance of using pedestrian bridges around to uh, keep people out of intersections you know so it's like a no-brainer for me but yeah every once in a while i think some people need a nudge now guilford with amherst college hadn't i think you had mentioned at one of the meetings that some of the their proposed crosswalks with that new facility across 116 that the town wasn't that supportive of where they wanted to put some of them is that right or am i misremembering yes we we've told them we we've told them we don't want the crosswalk closer to the crest of the hill. Yeah, I mean, that we sounds want. pretty <laughs> challenging. We'd like, yeah, we'd like the, we'd like the bridge. Um, and we would prefer if you're going to do a crosswalk, just improve the one that's farther down. And there is, there is a crosswalk currently at the crest of the hill too, right? Is that right? No, the, it's, oh. it's on the... Well, uh, Biddy's house, right? Yeah, well, it's like yeah, really, yeah. Side yeah. Of the no, yeah. 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 So, Chris. So, my understanding is that they're not planning to build that extra crosswalk at this time. Um, their budget is being, um, you know, looked at carefully, and that may—that's probably something that's not going to fit within the budget. So, when the planning board reviewed that project, um, Amherst College was pretty clear to them that they probably wouldn't go ahead with that second crosswalk, and they would. Um, try to improve the sidewalk on the west side of South Pleasant Street, as well as improving the existing crosswalk at Walnut Street. So that's their current plan, as far as I know. So, I mean, it does bring to mind a little bit for me, like what North Pleasant Street through the UMass campus used to be like before they worked on cutting down some of the pedestrian crossings. Like, I remember when I first moved to Amherst, um, that and maybe it will be a little different at Amherst College, but like the whole section of North Pleasant Street, you know, going from 
like the Fine Arts Center, like up to Eastman Lane. It was sort of a free for all, like particularly like in between classes where students would just be, cro I mean, crosswalk or no crosswalk and everybody would just be crossing. It was really hard to get through as a vehicle, but it also wasn't that safe for the students. And that over time, UMass, you know, put up, you know, bushes and other things to orient people to cross at certain crosswalks and to sort of discourage them from crossing free for all. And so I would be a little concerned, even though the Amish project is one building and not like a whole stretch, I would be concerned, you know, potentially about Amherst College students trying to, if there are fewer crosswalks, just trying to cross anyway. And it does seem, you know, particularly potentially unsafe with the fact that it's on the hill and that some of the visibility is limited by the crest of the hill and so on. So. And if you're coming from, you know, if you think about the existing crosswalks on the campus side, coming from the gym is fine. It takes you straight to that crosswalk. Uh, but the if you're coming up from the octagon or whatever the old observatory is or whatever it is up on the top of the hill there, yeah. you're coming parallel to the road for a good 20, 30 yards too, which is, you know, prime time for jaywalking, so. So oh, yeah, I mean, I think that would be something we'd have to, you know, watch. The town would have to watch, and the Amherst College would need to watch. But okay, well, I'm sure these discussions will be continued, and that some of this will come back to tack. So it is seven o'clock right now. I feel like we covered a lot of things and had some really good discussions. Um, does anybody have any parting comments, words? I have to let the dog in. And from our from our new members too. Anybody? Anything? Okay. All right. Well, then. Thank you. Oh, thank you for being here. And thank you for yes, being here. Thank you community. both. Thank okay. you, Tracy. Thank you. Okay. So I think, Bruce, you're going to do the honors. I'll move to adjourn. All right. Second. Second. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, everybody. All right. Have a thank good night. You. Bye. 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 Have a Bye. good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.